All right. So, so yeah. Um, should we stand, stand actually? Stand. stand? Or sit? Should we stand? Yeah. Let's stand. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, so yeah. My name is Alex. Um, uh, founder and CEO of SoundCloud. Uh, it's the world's fastest growing social sound platform. Um, so, I care a lot about sound. And with me, I have Tim Exile, who's totally awesome. Um, <laughs> Tim. What do you um, do? Well, I'm, uh, originally I started out as a musician um, and I kind of had this sideline in making my own tools because when I, when I first got into electronic music I thought this is, is got to be done live and it wasn't really possible to do it live then so I, uh, I made my own tools for improvising electronic music and then recently, um, well about, about a year ago actually when uh, SoundCloud released their app, I thought um, I, it occurred to me that something that I wanted to do for ages had become possible which is actually jamming with sounds that people were sending me in real time. So um, in the last year, um, with actually some of the developers in SoundCloud, um, I've made a website, uh, timxl.tv, uh, where I kind of hold these uh, live crowd jams, which is, so it's like a live video stream of me doing my thing with the software I programmed. But I've got like a sound, a physical sound inbox. Um, and you can send sounds either from the site or from the SoundCloud app um, into... Uh, this sound inbox, and I actually kind of use them and make kind of improvised electronic music live. So that's basically what I do. And it's it's a really cool experience. I think we'll sort of get into that uh, a little bit more as well. So we wanted to have um, a fireside chat, um, but without a moderator, because you're big in improvising. I really like improvising as well. So um, we wanted to talk generally about sound that we're super passionate about, and um, to sort of kick it off, because a lot of us don't think much about sound. So to kick it off, we wanted to show you something um, that we haven't shown anybody before, uh, which is a short, uh, a short video um, with some sound experts, Tim included, talking a little bit about what sound means to them uh, in a larger context. So could we roll the video, please? Sound to me. This can be sound. This can be sound. Sound can be terrifying. It can be beautiful. Sound is kind of like a color that you could hear. For me, in my head, it's like when I hear sounds, I hear things like knocking into each other. All the vibrations that come at us from all different directions for any purpose at all. We're vibrating. You and I, we're a chord. You feel vibrations as a kind of sense of touching from a distance. It's a way that we can sort of stay in like physical contact with each other. And it's a really big way that we relate to the world. Took a wrong turn, but I can't bring it back. I took a wrong turn, but I can't bring it back. Within a social context, that's what I think people are reacting to. Not necessarily to the meanings of the words, but the coloring of your sounds. All the kind of rich information we get about our environment. That sound. We all live in a, a kind of super saturated audio environment. Our brains are constantly filtering out um, stuff that we don't need to hear. I built up a filter against this uh, generator that's down the street. I can hear that bus saw going over there. I can hear the sound of planes in the sky. Hello! OK, the guy who's going around the corner here now, his brakes work perfectly well. Can you hear it? Crank it up. Let's take a listen. Listening to all this random, disparate noise and sound that's going on around us right now. When you actually tune it in and you listen to it, you, you hear pitches that are like singing together, you hear harmonies, you hear weird textures. It's about paying attention to the individual components more than the overall effect. The more differences you perceive, the richer your life is. I do remember mowing the lawn and almost falling into a trance because of their all this supposed noise is a rich stew of information about how we live and who we are as a culture. Whether it's the train rolling down the track, inside the sound. of somebody slinky going down the staircase. There are harmonics, there's richness. I call it the hidden choir. All this detail. That rhythm is like Most sounds around us, if you unlock them, there's richness inside them. There's music in every sound. All right. All right. Is 
this one back on? Okay, cool. Um, thanks. Um, so, so in this one, like uh, the one part where you say, um, you know, the more the more differences you perceive, the mm. more the the richer your life is. Mm. Um, what what does that mean, like in the context of sound? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. I said it at the time. Um, but I mean, I think I think in, in general, it's like um, I think what I mean is like when you when you hear a sound, it's very it's very easy to just hear sound as like sound, or especially when you um, you know, when sound is recorded, you know, we're all, we're all used to seeing waveforms, which is like a, it's a, it's just kind of a representation, representation of the data of the actual, yeah. just the shape of the sound. And I think it's very easy for us to kind of think that sound is just basically this, this thing. Right. Um, which is actually, in some ways, it's kind of unnatural, right? Because it's actually, it's a visual representation of something yeah, non-visual. It's, 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 it's a visual representation right? of scientific data, but I think, you know, it's, it's very easy to, for us to perceive it as a separate thing, but actually, within sound, um, you know, within this, the frequency data, within the phase data, all the stuff that you can kind of mine from sound, yeah. um, there's there's a huge this kind of like or semantic linguistic layer um, things that kind of tell us all sorts of stuff about our environment and so on. Mm. And so when you're listening to a sound, the more the more um, a kind of the more acute your your listening ability becomes, then then the more, the more you can understand and the more differences, the more you can um, perceive a difference, say, between uh, different pitches if you're listening to music yeah. or different instruments and so on. And, and the more you can say, well, that's that and that's that and they're not the same thing, then the richer your life becomes. I had this, this thing, um, so I worked as a sound designer before and I thought the, there was a lot of things about that that was really, really fascinating. But one thing was um, exactly like I say, I mean, if you, any kind of sound, like how much stuff, it doesn't matter how much stuff in, is in, you can break it down to this simple single wave, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, it's, it's basically just a, a single line going up and down, but we can hear all these like really complex things in it. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was really, it was actually really cool in that studio because it was the first time I was in an environment where I had a good enough sort of listening setup mm -hmm. so I could hear something really complex, but somehow mentally in my mind, like the sounds were separated. And I could start thinking about like separate things. And like if I was listening to music, I could really like p pull out the bass, yeah. and like I somehow mentally could really hear just the bass part in that. Yeah, totally. totally. Um, yeah. And then sort of, I think that that was something that then, like, I've been doing much more like pulling that back into the real world somehow. Like mm. you're walking around, and there's an enormous amount of sounds going on everywhere, right? Mm. But you can still use that thing of like zoning in on sort of a specific sound and sort of pulling out the, the richness in that. So, mm. you know? yeah. um, do you um, do you like in in uh, in your in your studio? Do you do you work with recording a lot of sounds as well, or is it mostly like from computer generated stuff? Um, well, no, I mean nowadays, I, I guess I spend most of my time uh, developing actually, but. Um, I suppose I've always, I've always kind of um, taken a, a kind of mixed approach, you know, taking some, um, some synthesized sounds and um, obviously, you know, the, the technology of sampling where you can, take, uh, you can take a recording and treat it like you would a synth. You can sort of, um, sort of shape it and pitch it like you would a generated sound. And after a while, it sort of doesn't really, it doesn't really matter where it comes from. And it, I mean, when you're dealing with things in a, in a very musical context, um, this is kind of like, you, you almost like rip all the, all this kind of like linguistic semantic layer out of the sounds mm. and you're just getting into like the gesture rules in, instead of like, um, you know, this is a sound of like me hitting that table. It's just like, it's got this kind of gestural quality to it. So when you listen back to it, you don't think, oh, there's a, there's a guy hitting a table. It's like, right. um, this is like, it's like one the... of the beat. This is like part of the pulse or yep. whatever. It's like this classic sound design thing of having mm -hmm. coconuts, like <laughs> putting them together, horses. and that's the horseshoes in the <laughs> yeah, film, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So just breaking yeah. it apart. So, would, so would you take something like that and then just sort of dive into it and pull it apart and try to make something else well, yeah, out of it? Yeah, try yeah, to hear yeah. something new in it? Or? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think this is this is kind of one of the interesting um, things that we're beginning to realize about about sound and how people relate to it, because. Mm -hmm. There's, there is like the, the, the musician's relationship to sound, right. which has been, it's kind of like sound has been dominated by that. I mean, apart from, yeah. apart from radio, which is very much about spoken word, yeah. um, and, then there's, and then there's music, which right. is very much about just the, the, just the, the, you know, the pure structure. It's like really abstract. It's just shapes. It's like yeah. making shapes out of sounds. Yeah. 
Um, it's was like it? it's math and sound. I think <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we're yeah, talking yeah. about yeah. how you know um, how there's been a very uh, like uh, the resonance with me like the, that there's been this very strict view right of of you know who creates and sound. It's only like a musician, right? And for at least for the last was like 80 years or something like that. It's been really like limited to thinking that oh well. You know, creating a sound is a, is a musician, and a musician is somebody who um, has practiced their entire life, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that's maybe that's a good way. And I don't believe in that at all, because I think that you know today, like everybody is really a creator. I mean, it doesn't ma matter if it's music or if it's um, you know pulling up your phone and like capturing a moment of sound. Like everybody can create super simple. So the distinction between sort of creator and consumer feels like it's not. It's not really valid anymore, and I think, mm. like, I mean, the stuff that you're doing with the the live, the big collaborative sessions is is a really good example of that, right? So, so well, maybe you could yeah. tell us like a little bit more uh, in detail about how those work. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of um, yeah, it's how I described earlier, but um, so you know, people can send me sounds, or you, anyone who who joins in can send me the sounds, which is a source material for the music. Yeah. So, so the, the creative process sort of happens live, and people can respond live, and there's a chat room and so on. Um, but for me, I think the real the real power of it is that it makes. I mean, music music before. I mean, before we had um, before we could put sounds to tape mm -hmm. and or into computers or whatever. We um, music was a social activity. I mean, it it was like. Yeah. It would, basically, unless unless you were part of like the mega super elite who could afford to um, employ composers and orchestras and chamber groups and so on to play music, especially for people you know, to compose and play music. The rest of it, you know, the, the, the sort of the mass market for music was folk. Right. And um, folk was something that happened down your local pub. It was a Cayley, you turned up with your instrument. The, the, the song format was really, really simple. There was, there was not much to it at all. Yeah. But everybody could join in. So it was like it, it was a real co-creative experience. And it was a social experience that brought people together. And that, that's kind of, that's what it feels like when I do these crowd jams. Oh, right, okay. But, yeah, but yeah but it's actually, it's kind of bringing back that, that social layer to music. Like um, what uh, you were saying, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, um, uh, about, the, about social gaming um, earlier. You know, so, so adding, as soon as you put, as soon as you add the social element to yeah. this, then suddenly everybody's like, ah, oh, right, yeah. Um, and you know, up it until now, it is like had... super. It is. It is really. It's really, really crazy. I mean, just having, having experienced it. Like I, um, yeah, I noticed that that Tim was doing this uh, online one evening. So I go to the website and I see that he's like live making music, like in his studio. And I can see it through the stream. And just that in itself was really, really like impressive. And it gets really interesting. And then you realize that you can just, yeah, record this thing yeah. and send it to you, like, in, in real time while you're doing that. And then, of course, like, you know, I had my little recording. I think it was, I dropped a, a, an ice cube in a glass or something like that. And you're sitting there watching and listening and, like, sitting as you're performing things. And then all of a sudden you hear your sound and it really has, like, become music. And you see sort of in the, the, the chat room on the side as well how there's, like, Tons of other people there sending their stuff in yeah. as well. We'll say, why haven't you played my sample yet? Yeah. <laughs> How do you, what's the weirdest sound that somebody submitted when you've done that? Uh, well, and there's always a fart every oh, time. That's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there's always one. That one's always <laughs> Cool. Um, so, and, and what, uh, what sort of, what's, what's next with that project? Like, I know we've been, we've been working together in, in building up the, sort of the platform for, for that, uh, being able to use SoundCloud to submit the tracks and stuff. Mm. Um, where, where are you sort of taking it? Well, it's just the, the, whole, the whole social element, really. I mean, um, I guess I've been thinking a lot about what, what, it, is to, what it is to go out partying, um, right. you know, what, what makes that a really special experience. Because you know it's very it's music centric, mm -hmm. so you've got the DJ who's playing stuff, but then obviously you've got a whole room full of people, and everybody's kind of being creative, creative with the dancing, or you know that someone's got a silly hat or something. And it's these sort of things that really kind of bring something to the to the to the party that makes people feel kind of like pulled together in it. And then also you've got the kind of folk aspect to it. And I think I think basic visibility, mm -hmm. you know, um, to make people um, everybody who's participating in that basically feel as much of a kind of stakeholder in, in that creativity and in that kind of like, it's a sort of transient micro-community yeah. that you're making for it's that. It's again about sort of shifting 
shifting from the sort of passive passive consumer kind of thing to getting people actually sort of active and engaged in it. And yeah, act active and engaged, but, but also sort of feeling, I think it's more like belonging rather than this, because um, I think, you know, to create things that people can identify with, um, not just necessarily because they're sort of wearing this brand or whatever, but they're mm. actually like, okay, I put a little bit into that, so I therefore belong right. to this yeah. thing, and then you can kind of forge connections with people and so on. So that's, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we do with it. Cool. Um, one thing, one thing that sort of that uh, that we we talked a little bit about it, and and I know I've been thinking a lot about it lately, um, is this. If we if we sort of think of the world of sound, that it's sort of it's something that is all around us. It's like it's there all the time. Um, it's a huge part of our everyday life, right? Hearing is the first sense that we develop. It's like it's it's a it's a really big thing of how we actually perceive the world. Um, I'd say that it's probably like it's even it's it's so big of a part of us that we always tend to forget that it's actually there. I mean, we live in a very visual visual culture, um, so we tend to forget a lot about the. Um, the sound part of it. Um, so one thing that 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 sort of almost like like un unsettled me a little bit uh, recently was um, that if I look at sort of my history, um, I look at sort of the the past, sort of my my life, and then sort of our overall history. Um, we have all these like memories, like in photos. We have all these memories in videos, and we have all these memories in text. But our history is pretty much mute. Mm. Like especially for um, for me, you know, there's there's so many things that I kind of remember, and I have like these these visual memories of them. But I don't have any any way of really um, I haven't saved any of those yet. Mm. So it's kind of like it's because um, um, we were talking about sort of your first sound memory, and it was actually a mute one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, well, this, I mean, it came up when we were doing the, uh, the interviews for the, for the video. Um, the, the interviewer actually asked me what, what my first sound memory was, and it's, it's a question I've never th thought of before, and I think, because you're right, you know, sound history, history is mute. You know, pic um, we've seen pictures on caves, you know, the, the visual element has been there for a while, and so is, I guess, the text, the linguistic, the stories, the narrative, but not the sound thing. But, um, so yeah, I was, I was like, and, and, then, and then I realized that it was actually my, um, my first violin lesson, um, which I think I was about six years old, um, and I, I learned with the, uh, the Suzuki method, I don't know if you know that, it's, it's much more, it's not, about, um, it's, it's not about kind of music theory, or it doesn't start with music theory, it, it starts with um, just, you know, physical technique. Um, so my first sound memory, um, was after we, well, the first lesson we were told to make um, a, a violin, a fake violin, out of a cereal box and a ruler. Um, or I think I was quite young, so it was a grape nut box and a ruler. Um, and to bring this in, and we were just going to practice a post posture. So my first sound memory was playing a violin that made no sound. Um, and, and I don't know, and, and, and then it just really made me realise like how, how much sounds are kind of connected to gestures and meaning and music is it's never well it is music has kind of become this thing that's like just music in its abstract form but actually when it starts getting interesting is when it's music by music music by someone music that you enjoyed with someone music from a certain place yeah. um, music at a certain time and so on Cool. So we're running a little bit over time, okay. and everybody wants mm -hmm. wants coffee. So let's wrap up. I think real, real uh, quick. If anybody wants to talk about sound, we're both around. Um, but also, if there's one thing to take away from this, is like just listen to like all the stuff around you. There's a lot more things happening um, uh, sound-wise than you think. And if you want to capture that and share it and have a good experience with uh, with your friends, uh, it's really fun, and that will also help you build up a history that's not just visual, that won't be mute, that actually has sounds and meanings to it. And you can do it with the SoundCloud app. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's what you want to say. <laughs> that's what and, I should uh, say. And you can also join in. I'm doing a crowd jam um, here at 9 p.m. It says on the uh, running order that it actually finishes at 9 p.m. tonight, but it doesn't because I'm going to be here doing a crowd jam. So uh, please come and join in, and uh, I'll tell you exactly how you can send sounds to me using the SoundCloud app. Thanks, guys. Thank you. That was great.